You ever take a political compass test and see this question? The freer the markets, the freer the people? Most people think they know what this means and answer accordingly. The reason people react how they do to this question is not because they know what this question really means. It is, in fact, because they have been tricked and lied to. This is a bold claim, I know, but it is simply true. You have not been tricked with respect to your position, per se, on this question, but instead you have been lied to about its meaning. Firstly, let's ask ourselves what free market means. What does it mean? What does it really mean? Does the freeness of the market pertain to production or distribution of goods? Well, the answer clearly is the distribution of them. Market refers to a mode of exchanging things. If I have something you want and you something I want, we can exchange these goods and this is called a trade. Markets are made up of trade interactions. A free market then would be this concept but without a government looking over every transaction. Most people agree with this so far. The problem with this occurs when the test infers your beliefs based on how you answer this question. If you agree with its proposition, you are clearly on the right. If you do not, you are on the left. This assumption, as I shall explain, is totally bullshit and makes me angry with almost all political tests. Like legit, I have not seen a single one which gets this right yet. Here is why this is so wrong. Politics are usually explained using two dimensions, up and down representing authority and left and right representing capitalism versus socialism. The problem with this is that while authority is a singular trait, capitalism and socialism in common parlance involve multiple traits. Of course, this is not true in reality. Socialism is when the workers own and control the means of production, and capitalism is when capitalists control and own them. However, since we have culturally attached the mode of production, capitalism, socialism, with a mode of distribution, markets, or planning, the tests also try to do the same thing when these are clearly very separate things. Okay, let me demonstrate this. Picture capitalism. Are you thinking of markets, trade, etc., etc.? Stop. When you think of capitalism, it does not mean trade. You should instead think of a company with a CEO and managers and workers, all of which being selected by him, the CEO. Now picture socialism. Are you thinking of planning, sharing of products, and free shit, etc., etc.? Stop. When you think of socialism, you should think of a cooperative venture with workers and managers, all of which being selected by the workers, the opposite of the capitalist structure. Let me put this clearly. Capitalism is not socialism, and socialism is not communism, in the same way that slavery is not feudalism, and feudalism is not capitalism. In addition to this, socialism has two forms, market socialism or anti-market socialism. Also, anti-capitalism is not communism or socialism, but anything against capitalism, including feudalism and slavery. Socialism rejects capitalism not for its markets, but for its productive structure. Anti-market socialism, then, rejects both capitalism and market forms of socialism for their markets, and still rejects capitalism for its productive structure. Communism rejects both socialism and capitalism for their states, market socialism for its markets, and capitalism for its productive structure. In conclusion, modes of production, worker-owned, collective-owned, and private-owned are not the same as modes of distribution, market-planned, and gift, except for collective-owned, which necessitates some form of market abolition, as there would be no groups apart from each other to trade with, forcing all to distribute according to need. In political compass tests, they have tried to force both the mode of production and the mode of distribution on the same axis when really, Disregarding all the other blatant issues with political tests, there should be a third dimension, up and down for authority, left to right for a mode of production, capitalism, socialism, and side to side for a mode of distribution, market or anti-market. There will be eight extremes on this cube compass, seven of which will be possible positions to hold. These would be an off-cap market position, P, 
Pinochet, Auth Cap Anti Market, Neo Feudalism or State Capitalism, Auth Soak Market, Tito, Auth Soak Anti Market, Stalin or Mao, Lib Cap Market, Anarcho Capitalism or Neoliberalism, Lib Cap Anti Market, a hypothetical democratic neo feudalism which is the eighth position that can't be held. While Auth Cap Anti Market can be said to be possible, Libcap anti-market seems almost entirely impossible because the more you make democratic the distribution network, the more the average worker can be said to own their workplace and means of production. Libcap anti-market is essentially then the same as Libsoc anti-market. Now, it having taken that long to explain the distinctions between market and anti-market socialism, I'm going to leave the rest of this video being very concise. There are many problems with markets, and I am aware of many of them, but nonetheless, removing them empirically has shown to be hard to do. Markets involve a lot of unequal exchange that can lead to the formation of classes. However, many attempts to eliminate markets have done just the same. Centrally planned economies create a bureaucratic coordination class, which is not answer to the people it serves. This model also has the problem of attempting to calculate the needs of its citizens and distribute to them properly. While this task could be done with computers, it may still have issues with collecting the data necessary to predict needs. There are other solutions to the problem of distribution, like Paracon, which I am more fond of, but I highly doubt the material conditions to implement these plans will exist in the near future, instead requiring many years of social change to accomplish. I am a market socialist. That doesn't mean that I don't see the issue with market economies. I do. It just means that I think that there must be an independent transitionary economic state of market socialism before we can talk about ending the market. Each economic age must abide by its roles. As the age fails due to its contradictions, it will start to break its roles, not in ways that bring us to the next age directly, but in ways that preserve the old structure without its old consistency that brought it about. Capitalists in our time grant almost anything to the people as long as it is not socialism, which would be the solution to all the issues. What I'm trying to say is that in each age we must advocate clearly and consistently the principles of the next and the direct next. If I lived in feudalistic France, I would be the most capitalist capitalist, as most thinkers were, but like most of them. I would state that when capitalism became destructive to its founding goals, it too should be replaced. Likewise, I, being born in capitalism, advocate for what I believe is the next or ideally next stage, market socialism, which abides by its own internal roles. However, when the contradictions between consumers and producers become too great, if it does become too great, change should come. Many say that market socialism will recreate the capitalist class over time, but I do not understand this criticism. This is like saying anti-slavery capitalism will recreate slavery because it was capitalist forces which created it initially in the modern era. Each age of economics will have its roles, its norms, and its conceptions of property and right. These rights are granted by us to us, so if we were to declare that the owner class be abolished, just as we declared the slave owner class be abolished in America, we would clearly define an employer class in a way to prevent it from reoccurring. This is even if the economic forces would make it optimal to have an employer class. Clearly with slavery, the same was true some of the time or there would have been no slave owners. In conclusion, the difference between capitalism and socialism is not in the use of markets, but in the use of privately owned means of production. The difference between types of socialism is in their stance to the mode of distribution, i.e. markets or some form of planning. I advocate for market socialism because of the empirical difficulties of other options, and many other socialists are beginning to agree with me on that opinion.